Okay, so here are the things that we're going to talk about today. As I said, there's a lot to cover. We're going to talk about why you should sell on Etsy, Etsy fees, what you need to know, shop name, make your Etsy shop look good, Etsy SEO, creating a listing that converts, which will help you guys that told me that you're having trouble with your sales, what to do after your first sale, shipping, five-star reviews, and your Etsy stats. Okay, so why should you even sell on Etsy? This is actually a common question that I get, you know, Julia, should I start on Etsy? Should I start my own website? Should I have both? What should I do? And if you have the time, if you, you know, if you have the time to do it, you could definitely start your Etsy shop and your own website. That's what we do. We have an Etsy shop and we have our own website. But if you don't have that much time, if you want to just get your feet wet, if you want to start slow, then I recommend that you start on Etsy. 10 out of 10, 100% recommend that you start on Etsy. And this is why. With Etsy, you instantly reach millions of buyers in the US and around the world. I forgot the exact numbers, but I believe that last time, I think it was in the beginning of the year where Etsy reported reported their numbers they said that 81 point they have 81.4 million active users so a lot of people go on etsy you guys and i don't know about you but lately i haven't seen so many etsy commercials when i watch hulu the other day on the podcast that i was listening they did an ad for etsy etsy is really promoting the website to reach more potential buyers especially right now for the holiday season so when you are inside of etsy you have the potential to get millions of views and visits. Etsy is also a trusted brand. That is the number one reason why I think you should start on Etsy other than starting your own website. Because when you start your own website, either on Squarespace, Shopify, whatever it is, you probably don't have any reviews. You might not have any social media following or if you even have social media. So people don't know if they can trust you yet. They don't know your brand. They know they don't know your name. They don't know if you're a scam. They don't know if, you, if they can trust you. But on on Etsy people know that they can trust Etsy and if they have any issues with the shoppers they can get in contact with Etsy themselves so really people really trust that platform uh, it's quick to set up and it is affordable if you have all the information that you will, that you need to have when you open your Etsy shop, which we'll go over. If you have all that information, you can probably open your Etsy shop in five minutes. It's super quick. It's super fast. It's such an easy process. And in order to start, you need to pay 20 cents because in order to open your Etsy shop, you need to list your very first item. And in order to list, you have to pay 20 cents. And then all the fees after that will come after you make a sale versus for example we use Squarespace Squarespace we need to pay $50 a month regardless if we make a sale or not it's just 50 in order to start we had to pay $50 and then $50 every single month and on Etsy you just have to pay 20 cents in order to start and last but not least you can be a part of an amazing community you have Etsy workshops like you're watching right now, you have the Etsy forums, Etsy community, you have people like me that teach you how to grow on Etsy, on Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is. So you get to be a part of a community that is super supportive and a community that is really willing to help other Etsy sellers. Etsy fees, let's go over it really quick. I don't wanna to spend too much, too too much time talking about this. I have a YouTube video that the link is over here. Again, if you get a copy of this presentation, you can click on this link and then it will take you to my YouTube video where I go over more details. But these are the three fees that you have to pay no matter what. Some fees, for example, Etsy ads, offsite ads, those are fees that you have to pay if you choose to use it. But those three fees you have to pay, every single Etsy seller needs to pay. So you have listing fees, which we have already talked about, which is the 20 cents that you need to pay in order to list an item. So every time you list a product on Etsy or every time you sell that item and you want to renew it, you have to pay the 20 cents. 
Then you have the transaction fee. This is the fee to cover the cost of using the platform. And this fee is 6.5% of the price you charge for your item. So Etsy will take 6.5% of how much you are charging. And I just want to point out that this fee had was recently changed i don't know exactly but a few months ago they changed it from five percent to six point five percent so i believe that if you watch my youtube video i would i will say that it is five percent but it has changed now it's six point five percent and then you have the payment processing fee this is what allows you to accept online payments you will be charged three percent plus 25 cents per transaction. And that 3% is taken from the total sale of the of the item. So for example, if you, you have the cost of the item plus tax, plus shipping, plus it, uh, extra charge for customizations, that amount, that is the 3% that Etsy is going to take from you. And your fees will be deducted from your profit. So again, going back to using Squarespace that we use for our website. Squarespace takes out 40, my, the $50 from our bank account. Etsy will take that fee from the profit that you make. So you don't necessarily have to go in your bank account and pay Etsy. Etsy will just deduct the fees from your profit. If you guys have any questions about fees, make sure to ask me on the chat. And I'll answer that at the end. I know fees is a question that a lot of people have. So what you will need to get started, Julia, I'm ready to open my Etsy shop. I want to do it. What do I need? You will mainly need three things. First, the name, the name of your Etsy shop. What do you want to call um, your business? And your name is, I think we have, let me double check. Yeah. Okay. I just want to double check. I had a slide just talking about name. So we'll talk about name a little later. Uh, you will need your banking information. So you will need a bank account in order, you know, for you to get paid for Etsy to deposit your revenue, your profit, you will need your banking information. And then you will also need your very first listing. I think this part of the process scares a lot of people because you know you fill out your name you fill out your information your banking information and then i think one of the very last steps is that you have to have your first listing and people are like oh my god i'm not ready to list my first product i don't have photos like i i'm not ready to list and that is totally okay what i recommend that you do is that you literally list something random it doesn't even have to be a product literally list anything just have a title and a photo of something literally whatever because as soon as you're done opening your etsy shop as soon as your etsy shop is live what you can do is deactivate that listing that way people that way your etsy shop is opened but people are not going to see any listings you will have zero products listed and in order to deactivate a listing this is what you have to do just go to the the listing that you want to deactivate and then over here that's what you're going to click and then that's it and then i think after that you just have to confirm and that's it that way people will not see your listing and if you want to then go back to the listing maybe work on it whatever it is what you have to do is go to your shop manager go to listings and then on the right side you're going to see this inactive and this is where your listing that you activated, deactivated will be. Shop name. So if you don't know what to call your Etsy shop yet, you want to open, you know what you want to sell, but you are bad with names. And I totally feel that I am not good with names at all. Every single business of ours, Petite Flower Studio, Females Connection, it was all my mom's idea. I'm awful with names. But here are a few tips. First of all, your shop name is not your username. So think about your business and branding. So whenever you're opening a Etsy shop, that's the name of your business. That's not your username. So have that in mind. Use words and phrases that express 
express is written wrong, but anyways, that express the vibe or feeling you want your brand to evoke. So that's what you have to think about. What is my brand all about? Branding is very, very important. And you know, what's the vibe? What's the aesthetic? What's the look? What do I want to portray for my business? Your name should be memorable and you should choose something that is easy to pronounce and to write. I love our name. I don't, Maybe I would change it. My point is, I love our name. I I love Petite Flower Studio. The thing with that is, whenever people ask me, oh, what's your business name? What's your Etsy shop name? And I tell them Petite Flowers Studio. I'm not sure if they're going to write Petite the right way. So if they go on Etsy and try to look for my Etsy shop, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to find me. Literally, this happened the other day. I was at the doctor's and the PA asked me, oh, what's your Etsy shop name? I'm going to look you guys up. And I told her in my mind, I was like, I don't know if she's going to spell that right. So that is something that you have to think about. Choose something that it's easy to pronounce and it's easy to spell. That way, if you tell people what your name is and if they look for you, they are going to be able to find you. And use using what you sell is fine, but think about the future. You might, right now, you might say, you know, I wanna sell mugs, personalized mugs. That's what I wanna sell. And you name your Etsy shop, Ali's Mugs, or whatever your name is. Anna's mugs. That's not a bad name, but the problem with that is in the future, you might not want to sell mugs or in the future, you might not just want to sell mugs. So think about, think about that. I don't necessarily recommend having the name of your product under your Etsy shop's name. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but you might change your mind later. And also one of the points that I skipped when you're writing your Etsy shop's name, this is a big thing. Capitalize each le it, the first letter of each name because when you type your name, when you go on Etsy and you know type the name that you want, you can't separate the words. So you can't do petite space flowers space studio. You can't use space. So what I recommend is that instead of writing everything in lowercase, do uppercase for the first letter of each thing of each name. All right, you open your Etsy shop, you have your name, you are ready. What are what is the very first thing that you need to do? Even before you list an item, I recommend that you customize your home page. So the shop home is often the first impression a brand makes on potential customers. Strong, cohesive visuals help tell the story of a shop and what's unique about its products. A well-coordinated shop home captures visitors' attention, inspires buyer, inspires buyer confidence, and has the potential to build long-term loyalty. Your shop home is going to be the very first impression that someone has of your business. And it's super, super important that you pay attention to every single detail and that you are really creating a cohesive and aesthetically pleasing Etsy shop. I forgot to open my Etsy shop. Let me um really quick let me just open my etsy shop for you guys and i'll show you what my etsy looks like okay let me share my screen again Um, there you go. Okay, so this is my Etsy shop, and I just want to quickly go over every single section with you guys and what are some of the sections they need to be paying attention to. First things first is your banner. The banner, and I'm looking at it in the computer screen, your banner looks big. It's definitely something that's going to catch shoppers' attention. So your banner is very, very important. As you can see, our banner is super simple. It's just photos of our items. And I think sometime this week, we're actually going to switch to our Christmas items. But that's something you guys can do as well. Just the photos of your items. You can also do text. For example, I recommend that if you are running a sale or if you offer free shipping in all orders, this is something that you can talk about on your banner. You can use text to talk about it. 
Something important about your banner is that if you choose to use photos of your products, make sure you're using, make sure all the photos look cohesive. They look good together. I see some people that do, do their banners and you know, one photo has a green background, then the other photo has yellow props, then the other one is a different style. Like when, if you are using your listings for your banners, make sure that each single product, everything looks cohesive and looks well together. Also pay attention to the color of your product. It would look very messy and all over the place if I was using this pumpkin uh, baby shower welcome sign. And then here I was using a spring banner. And then here I was using a Christmas wall art. It was just look all over the place, even though those are things that I sell on my, on my Etsy shop. I always make sure that my banner looks good and it looks cohesive. Then you have your logo and logo and banner. This is something that you can create on Canva, canva.com. It's a free website. I use it. It's the website that I'm using for my presentation. It's great. Um, and then you have your icon. This is something that a little thing that can make a huge difference for your icon. Make sure that you have photos of you. I see that some people add photos of their logo. So they have the logo here and logo here. The reason why you should be adding photos of yourself or you and your partner or whatever it is, is that people, if they see, if shoppers see you, then they know that there's an actual person behind this Etsy shop. Or if they see this, they might see two people and they're like, oh, is this like a mom and daughter? Like, what's the situation? And then if they scroll down, and I'll show you guys, they'll read our story, but make sure you have photos of you because when people go on Etsy, they like to support a person behind the Etsy shop. They like to support a family behind the Etsy shop. So make sure you have photos of you. Then you have announcements. This is what we write. We talk about our production time. We talk about our Etsy shop, our Instagram, then the photos of our products. I could do a whole workshop just talking about photos because they're so important. And actually photos is a big topic that I talk about during my Etsy shop critiques is a big topic inside my course, because in my opinion, photos and SEO are the two most important things about your Etsy shop. The number one thing that I want to talk about photos, which I kind of talked about on when I talked to, I kind of talked about when I was talking about banners is to make sure that all of your photos look cohesive. If you scroll through my Etsy shop, you see that I use different mock-ups, I use different backgrounds, they're all different designs. But when scrolling through it, everything looks well together. This Etsy shop looks cohesive. It looks like it all belongs to the same Etsy shop. And that's because we pay attention to a few things. We make sure that we buy, so for example, these two are mock-ups, but then this one, we take photos ourselves. So we always make sure that we have neutral backgrounds, white backgrounds, no crazy pop of color. Uh, we always use greenery. So we have greenery here, greenery here. Our designs are usually using the same types of fonts, the same art designs. So we do things throughout our photos and product designs that makes sure that our Etsy shop and our photography is going to look cohesive. So if you're taking photos yourself or if you're buying mock-ups, make sure that you're using similar backgrounds. Number one, that's the one thing they should be paying attention to. You don't have to use the same background for all of your photos. Just like here, this background is different than this one, it's different than this one, but they all, they, they're all similar. They're all neutral, white, no crazy props. So pay attention to that and also pay attention to your lighting. I see some people that have their Etsy shop and, you know, a listing looks dark. Then right next to it, there's a listing that looks super bright. So make sure that the lighting for your photos also is just cohesive and it looks the same. Okay, then scrolling down, you have our story. So about our business, about me and my mom. And a thousand percent, this is something that you guys should do. Make sure that you have an about section talking about your story. Again, people like to support people. Make sure you have the links for your social medias. 
Uh, and then over here, we have our shop members talking a little bit about my mom, talking a little bit about me, and then of course, shop policies. So th those are things that you should be paying attention to on your Etsy shop. And when you are playing around with Etsy, when you are just starting your Etsy, make sure that all of those different sections look good. And then also, if you get this presentation, I also have a link for another YouTube video of mine that will go over more details on how you can personalize your Etsy homepage. Etsy SEO. So I said that in my opinion, photography and SEO are the most important things about your Etsy shop. Etsy SEO stands for search engine optimization, and that is how your listings get found on Etsy. So for example, I sell bridal shower banners. And obviously I want people to find me on Etsy. I want people to come across my listing. So SEO op optimization is, is exactly that. What are some things that you can do throughout your listing and Etsy shop that's going to make sure that people, Etsy shoppers are finding your listings. So for example, SEO, SEO works in two phases. You have query matching and then ranking. SEO is honestly, guys, a whole topic by itself. Etsy Success just did an SEO week. And if you watched it, you know there's a lot that goes behind the scenes. SEO is a lot. But for this presentation, I want to talk about really quickly the two phases and how it works and some what are some of the things that you have to pay attention to. So first of all, you have query matching and the search engine will, that's when the search engine will determine if you make a query. What do I mean by that? So I sell bridal shower decorations, right? When people search for, let's do a bridal shower banner because that's most specifically to my product. When people type bridal shower banner, me as an Etsy seller, I want to make sure that I'm going to be inside this query. I want to make sure that whenever people search for this, I'm going to be inside this search. And as you can see right here, these are all of my listings. For bridal shower banner, there are over 42,000 listings inside this query. So first of all, you got to make this query. But if you make this query, then you're competing with over 42,000 other Etsy sellers. And that's when ranking comes along. So ranking is the, the search engine will determine your ranking. And what I mean by that is the search engine will determine which listing should be the very first listing of bridal shower banner this listing over here well these are all ads actually so for example my banner over here is on the very is the very first listing when someone searches for bridal shower banner and there are reasons for that it's not there because i'm lucky it's not there because it's random there are many many reasons or not, i shouldn't say many there are actually eight reasons why um, you would have a good ranking inside a query matching. And then that I have a YouTube video for it. I'm sorry that I, you know, I'm not going into too much detail about SEO. It's just because we have a lot to cover. And if SEO is a topic that you don't know yet, it's a topic that you're interested about, then all of these links are going to help you. These are all links to videos, articles that can help you out. And over here, I talk about how ranking really works. Um, so again, if you get a copy of this presentation, you will be able to access all of these links. Tips for conversion rate. So you open your Etsy shop. You make sure you make sure your Etsy shop looks good. You have a few items listed. You know how SEO works. People are starting to find you, and that's awesome. But you can get hundreds and thousands of visits on your Etsy shop, but you can make zero sales. And that might be happening with some of you guys. I was checking on the chat and some of you guys were saying how, you know, I started my Etsy shop, but I have zero sales or I barely get any sales. Number one, it could be because you're not getting any views and visits. And I recommend that you check your Etsy stats. But if you are getting views and visits, but you're not getting any sales, 
the problem might be your actual Etsy shop or your actual product. And those views and visits are not converting into sales. So what are some of the things that you have to pay attention to when it comes to converting those visits into actual sales? Number one is to use engaging and descriptive photos. I want to show you guys an example of a former client of mine. I did her Etsy shop critique and she's now also a student of mine and I worked together with her. And the number one thing that I talked about during her Etsy shop critique was her photos. So you see this photo over here. This is what we call a studio shot. Studio shot is great. Everyone should have at least one studio shot. The studio shot is just your product with no props, no distraction, it's literally just your item. But what I see a lot of people doing is that they use studio shots. Let me, I have given this example before. Let me grab my baby elephant here. Let's say that you sell this on Etsy and your photos is the product like this. Your very first product is your photo, is the item like this. Then for your second variation, you do it like this. Then for your third variation, you do it like this and you just keep rotating your product. You didn't do anything different. You didn't add any props. You're just kind of rotating your product and taking a bunch of photo photos and calling it a day. This is not very interesting. This is not very exciting and online. And I'm not just saying this for Etsy, but e-commerce is huge. There are probably thousands of people selling the same thing that you are selling. And you know, you shouldn't get discouraged because of that. I believe there's space for everybody, but your photos, if it doesn't excite your shoppers, if it doesn't get them excited about purchasing from you, then you're not going to make any sales. So I want to show her photo variations as an example of something that you can also think about. So she has her studio shot, then she has a video, and a video is just her placing the spoon on top of her spoon holder. This is what we call a lifestyle shot. And everyone should also have a lifestyle shot because when you just look at this item like this, without reading the title, without reading anything about this item, you don't really know what this is. You're like, is this like a de decor piece? Like, what the heck is this? And then when you look at this video, you're like, oh, okay, this is a spoon rest. This makes sense. So whatever you're selling, even if it might be obvious, if you're selling earrings, for an example, when you take a photo, a studio shop, people will probably be able to tell that this is an earring, but make sure that you have a picture of you or a model or a friend or whatever it is actually wearing an earring. This will help people visualize what this product will look like in their lives. And a lifestyle shot is a very powerful type of photo. Then you have this type of shot and everything about it really creates that Christmas cozy feel, the background, the mug with the coffee, the spoon. This is another lifestyle shot is showing the product being used, but it, cre it really creates the vibe. It really creates the mood. And that's something with props, you guys. Right here, she used the spoon, she used the mug, she used a lot of different props, but the props are here for a reason. It's to really set the tone, to really set the mood of the photo. I see a lot of people that use flowers as a prop. Uh, so again, using this more example, I have a plant over here. So they will take this baby elephant, I keep calling baby elephant, but this pink elephant, and then just setting a little plant over here as a prop. This is not doing anything for you. Like using plants, it, it might just add a little touch, um, but if it doesn't make sense, you shouldn't use it. On our Etsy shop right here, we do use plants. We use greenery, we use flowers, but this is just to set the tone. Like this is a fireplace with some decorations. Like I'm trying to help shoppers visualize my banner on their fly fireplace. But if you're just randomly placing flowers next to your product and it's just not really making sense, it's not there for a reason, don't even use it because they can actually be very distracting. And then here she has color variations so people can pick what they want. Love this photo. It's her, this is a, what is this shot called? Um, 
It's not behind the scenes. There's a specific name for this type of shot, I forgot, but it's just you making the product is again, so people can see there's an actual person behind this business. When I purchase from this Etsy shop, I'm actually supporting a person, a family. And over here, she says each piece is handmade in my studio. Just another one showing her product using the coffee mug. She has a packaging shot, which I a thousand percent recommend if your item is a giftable item, if this is something that people can give it as a gift, use a packaging shot because let's say that someone is between this spoon holder and her competitor's spoon rest and her competitor's spoon rest and they want to buy it as a gift and her competitors doesn't offer any gift wrapping, but she does, then the shopper might want to purchase from her just because of the gift wrapping because you know some people don't like to gift wrap some people are lazy some people don't know how to do it so this can really impact your sales and then she has a little information about her items text photos are great for you to talk about your etsy shop for you to talk about anything special about your item so she says handmade with clay ships quickly all of that good stuff. So you can also use text inside your photos. Another, what is this called? Uh, group shot, a group shot and the last group shot. Again, she's using props that creates the vibe that creates the mood. So we just cover a lot of photos and I really want you guys to pay attention to your photography. Number one thing that I see with my students, that I, that I see my with my clients, if they're telling me, Julia, I am not making enough sales. Hands down, I can guarantee to you that the number one problem is photography or sometimes it's SEO as well. But no matter how good your SEO is, no matter you know if you're using keywords, if you have a good ranking, if you don't have good photos, no one's going to buy from you. No one, especially online. So photos is hands down one of the most important things about your Etsy shop. All right. Then we have write engaging, informative listing descriptions. Your descriptions should talk about the product. It should have all the information that's necessary. So for hours, we talk about the banner, we talk about the paper that we use, the ribbon, the color, the material, whatever it is, anything about the product. We talk about how to customize it because our banners are custom. So if you sell any personalized items, make sure you talk about how to personalize it on your, on your description. We have processing time, shipping time and then we talk about our returns and exchanges and if you sell something that requires a care instruction like if you sell personalized starbucks cups then make sure you're talking about your care instructions under your description your description you guys should have all the information that a shopper needs about your listing if the Here's what I always say. If you confuse them, you lose them. If the shopper's confused about your shipping time, your care instructions, the material that you use, nine out of 10 times, they're not going to waste their time messaging you. They're just going to exit out of your Etsy shop and go to your competitors. So make sure that you are answering any questions the shopper might have under your description. Then we have offer excellent customer service. This is just a given, but you know, answer to answer messages quickly, work around with your customers, have a good processing time, shipping time, just basic things like that. Complete your about section, like I talked about when I was showing my Etsy shop, make sure you tell your story, why you started, why you sell what you sell. A lot of times, you guys, I'm a big Etsy shopper. I shop on Etsy a lot. And a lot of times I choose to buy from an Etsy seller because yes, I like their product, but I also like their story. I relate to their story or their story touches, touches me in some sort of way. So, Talk about your story. Talk about why you started your small business. Add shop policies. I see so many people that don't have a shop policies. And all of that, you guys, you can add, you can add it on your shop manager. And it's super easy to do. Uh, and it's super easy to find. But make sure you have a shop policies. Have a competitive 
price. This is also one of the biggest questions that I get. Julia, how much should I charge for my item? First of all, you have to take into account your material cost, your supply cost, how much you want to charge for your hour. Take all of that into account. Then do a market research. Look at how much your competitors are charging. When it came to us coming up with the price of our banner, we wrote down all of our material costs. So how much does it cost us to make that banner? How much we want to make per banner? And then we checked out our competitors. So if you look for bridal shower banners and like the style that we do, you will see that the range between 20 and $30. So we try to stay within that range. So that's what, what I recommend you guys to do. It's look at your competitors, see how much people are charging. So you stay within that range because sometimes if you charge way too much comparing to your competitors, then no one's going to shop from you. And also the opposite, if you're charging way less than your competitors, sometimes shoppers associate that with a bad quality product. I always give this example, but a few months ago, we were getting gas and we passed two gas stations. One that the gas was $2.30, which is way too cheap for where we are right now. And then the other one was almost $4. The gas station that was charging us $2.50, it was way too cheap. It was like sketchy. I'm like, this gas probably has water in it. Like, I don't know, it's way too cheap. So if <laughs> this might be happening with you as well. If you're charging, way too little comparing to your competitors people might think it's sketchy people might think it's not a good quality item and last but not least is have a fast shipping and processing time this is a big turn off to shoppers they like what you sell you have good photos you have good description you have a good price but your shipping will take way too much your processing time will take way too long people are not going to buy from you. And this happens to me a lot, you guys. I also go on Etsy to buy gifts for people a lot. And I like everything. I like the item a lot, but it's going to take three weeks for the item to ship. I'm like, I don't have three weeks. I'm not gonna wait three weeks. <laughs> like I could wait three weeks, but I'm just very impatient. And a lot of people are like that as well. So ship your items as fast as you can. Have a fast processing time. So what to do after your very first sale? A few things is to message your buyer and thank them for your purchase. And on the next slide, I have message ideas that you can send them. Have all of your materials and packaging. I have a funny story. If you follow me, you might have heard this already. But um when we opened our Etsy shop, we made our first sale pretty quickly. Within a few days, we made our very first sale. And guess what? We didn't have any of our materials. We didn't have any of our supplies. So what we had to do is go to, I think it was AC Moore at that time and buy all of our materials. But the problem with that is that we were in the middle of a snowstorm and that snowstorm was going to last days and it was our very first order we didn't want to be you know behind our processing time so we did go to ac moore in the middle of a snowstorm to get our supplies <laughs> and it was pretty scary but worth it uh, so make sure that doesn't happen with you i would recommend that you buy your material and supplies before you even list your item that way when you make your first sale you already have what you need. Don't forget to include a thank you note and most importantly, a handwritten thank you note. That means a lot to people. Shoppers will really appreciate that and ship the item, obviously. But with that is ship fast or have, yeah, ship your items fast, as fast as you can. Here are a few messages ideas. I'm not going to read them if you guys want to screenshot them. So this is a message for your handwritten thank you note that you can write uh, a message after they make a purchase from you. So this is what we used to do in the very beginning. As soon as we got a purchase, we would message them on Etsy and you know just thank them. And message 
and message after you shipped their product. This is also something that we used to do. We just don't do this anymore, you guys, because once you start to grow, you have so many orders in a day that you just don't have time to do these things. We still have a thank you note though, um, but this is also something that you can message after you have shipped their item. And when I say hate dot dot dot, that's where you should include their name. Always write messages to your shopper and use their first name. Shipping, how to ship or how to determine your shipping cost, big question for a lot of people. We ship everything with Etsy. We buy our shipping labels on Etsy. We just think that it's the most affordable way to do it and also the easiest way to do it. And I recommend that you guys also ship on Etsy. So how to determine the cost. The cost goes way beyond the mailing price of your product. Think about Etsy's shipping fees, packaging supplies, paper, tape, ink, gas, bubble, wrap, literally everything. This is a common mistake that I see people doing is that they will charge their shoppers the same amount that USPS charges them. And you shouldn't do that because with your shipping, you also are pay you are paying for packaging, gas, ink, everything that involves shipping and that shouldn't come out of your pocket your shoppers should be paying for that this is a great website this is the link if you click over here that can help you determine the cost of your shipping it's one of etsy's websites and this is what we used to determine our cost look at your competitors if you are not sure how much to charge you can look at your shops you can look at shops that sell, sell sell similar products as you. Look at how much they charge for their shipping and that will give you an idea. Same thing with determining your price. Looking at your competition is a great way to see what's the range that I should be charging and make sure that you're looking at Etsy shops from the same country as you because a big thing for shipping, the number one thing that's going to determine the cost of your shipping is the weight of your item, how heavy it is. So it, when you look at your competitors, the weight of their product is the same as the weight of yours. So if, it will give you a good range of how much you should be charging. And free shipping. Etsy ranks shops that offer free shipping higher. This is something that will benefit you and it could benefit your ranking. If possible, offer free shipping overall or on purchases above $35. I really, really recommend that you guys consider offer, offering free shipping. We do free shipping on purchases above $35. Now, if your item is heavy, if you sell a chair or even just items like um I'm like candles for an example these items are heavy and because of that your shipping will be expensive not expensive but it will be a little higher so maybe if your shipping is a little bit expensive then you shouldn't offer free shipping but you know if your shipping is two dollars three dollars maybe you should consider offering free shipping and just one thing that I want to point out is that shipping is never free, you guys. When someone does free shipping, what they're doing is that they're taking the cost of that shipping and adding to the cost of their product. So if you sell an item that's $10 and the shipping is two, what you have to do is charge $12 for your item and then $0 for shipping. Because at the end of the day, you will still have to pay for shipping. Even though you're not charging your shoppers, when, it, when you go to USPS or when you're shipping your labels through Etsy, Etsy is going to charge you for shipping and that shouldn't come out of your pocket. So if you offer free shipping, make sure you're just including that cost in the cost of your product. And then reviews. Some, some of the things that I wanna talk about reviews and how to get five-star reviews. Reviews is something that is highly going to impact a shopper's purchase decision when trying to decide if they're going to purchase from you or not. Shoppers on Etsy really read reviews. So here are some of the things that I think it's crucial. It's nothing crazy. We don't have a crazy formula, idea, crazy message that you can send, but these are just little things that you can do. And these are things that we have been doing for the past eight years that have gotten us over 3,000 reviews, 3,000 five-star reviews. And these are just basic things that you need to follow. 
Number one is user listing description to answer any shopper's questions. This is more to avoid negative reviews because you know, that ha that happened with us in our very first negative review. Our negative review was that the shopper said that the quality, the paper was not what they're, what the paper was not what they expected. And this was our fault because in the description, we didn't talk about the paper. So make sure that you talk about your product and the materials that you are using. Showcase your products from all sides. Again, this is something to avoid disappointment. Throughout your photos, you need to show shoppers exactly what they're getting. Set expectations with clear return policy. Surprise and delight with thoughtful touches, such as handwritten thank you notes, or maybe a little sticker that you include with every order, just little things that's going to make shoppers really happy. Respond to messages quickly. Let shoppers know when their item will be delivered dispatch on time or faster if you can, and send thank you coupons. If you scroll through our reviews, the number one comments that we get is how fast we shipped their item because we ship our banners within one to two business days, how fast we answer to their message, and what's another one that I would say, the quality of our product. If you, yeah, shipping, answering messages and quality of our product are the three number one comments of our five star reviews and like i said it's nothing crazy it's just things that you should be doing as an etsy seller and if you keep doing these things if you keep doing a good job those five star reviews will come and again these are links for two youtube videos that i have that can help you even more with negative or with reviews and i also have this video which is how to respond to a negative review if you ever get a negative review i tell you exactly how to respond to that and last but not least your shop stats so i wanted to go over shop stats really quickly with you guys and tell you what each thing means because it's so important that you know your numbers it's so important that you know exactly where your views and visits are coming from uh, so Etsy app and other Etsy pages. This is visits from the app. Anything that comes from the app will be under that. And other pages on Etsy.com, such as Editor's Pick, the homepage, and Favorites. And then Etsy search is visit from Etsy.com that it's coming from the search bar. One thing that I want to point out is that you might be experiencing a huge decrease with your Etsy search while experiencing a huge increase with your Etsy app. And that's because Etsy has been pushing the Etsy app a lot lately. They're trying to make people purchase from the app rather than Etsy.com. For example, if you go on Instagram, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but if you go on someone's Instagram and click their link in the bio for their Etsy shop, Etsy will take you to a page where it says, I don't know what it says exactly, but it says something like, do you want to do this on the app? And then you click on it and it will take you to the Etsy app other than Etsy.com. So that's why you might be experiencing a big increase. This is one of the reasons, but it, just in general, Etsy is really pushing Etsy app lately. Um, Etsy marketing and SEO, that's visits from Google, Yahoo, Bing, other search engines, and also Etsy offsite ads. Direct visits to your, or yeah, direct and other traffic, that's direct visits to your shop, visits from blogs, websites, and other websites that send traffic to your shop. So if a blog talked about you, also TikTok, it's not under social media yet um social media is visits from social media obviously and then visits from etsy ads is etsy ads not offsite ads offsite ads is coming from etsy marketing so that is all i have for you guys today um i'm gonna take the time right now and answer questions that you guys have i see you guys already asking me questions under the chat if you want a copy of this PowerPoint, DM me on Instagram and I will send you the link. I don't, I, yeah, it's just easier if you guys send me, I was, I was going to say I could maybe um, send it on the chat, but it's just easier if you DM me on Instagram. So if you guys have any questions, I would happily answer them.
Okay, let me go. Oh, actually, I'll just leave this page so you guys know what my Instagram is in case you want to DM me. Okay. Um. Ooh. There you go. I guess I'll start from the bottom. Someone says, how do you get people to leave your reviews? Just, I, like, over here. These are how you get people to leave your reviews. We don't necessarily ask people when someone purchases from us. We're not like, hey, can you leave us a review? There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not something that we like to do. We don't like to push our shoppers to do anything. We want them to write reviews if they are comfortable with it, if it feels right to them. But all of these things, shipping on time, having good customer service, having thank you notes, things like that, those are all things that it's going to encourage people to leave you five-star reviews. And like I said, if you scroll through our Etsy shop, we have, where's my Etsy shop? Let me just get one product. We have so many reviews and none of them we have ever asked a shopper to leave us. Shoppers leave us a review whenever they are comfortable doing it. I would love more SEO info. And I know that SEO is a huge topic, you guys. Right now, something that you guys can do is check my YouTube channel. Um, also, Etsy, the Etsy handbook has a lot of information on Etsy SEO. I have so many YouTube videos for SEO. If you get a copy of this presentation, I have the links for those videos. Those are just free things that's going to help you with SEO. On my Instagram, I talk about SEO a lot as well. Um, but next year, I am going to do a workshop on SEO. So you can definitely learn with that. Do you recommend Etsy ads? And what app would you recommend for SEO? Do I recommend Etsy ads? Yes but I only recommend Etsy ads if your Etsy shop is in good shape. No matter how many views and visits you get, if your photos don't look good, if your price doesn't look good, if your Etsy shop doesn't look good in general, people are not going to buy from you. So first focus on you know, all of those things, getting sales naturally or not naturally, but getting sales organically, and then think about doing Etsy ads. But I do think that Etsy ads can be extremely helpful just like I was showing to you guys over here when someone searches for bridal shower banner technically my listing is the first one in the under that ranking but these are the ones that are going to show up first because they are paying for the Etsy ads so I think Etsy ads can be beneficial but your Etsy shop and your listings need to be looking really good before you invest on Etsy ads and apps for SEO. I don't use any apps for SEO, you guys. Everything that I know with SEO, it was try and error. I would say that right now we are pros at Etsy SEO just because we have tried so many different things. We have been doing this for eight years. And you know, I do Etsy shop critiques, I have students. So I also see what a lot of other Etsy sellers are doing but I don't use any apps for Etsy SEO. Again, if you guys wanna learn more on Etsy SEO, I recommend that you follow me on YouTube, Instagram, and also the Etsy handbook provided by Etsy. The, I think it's called Etsy seller handbook for, provided by Etsy has a lot of good information as well. What advice would you give to someone selling digital products? We sell digital products. Um, and let me go to my Etsy shop. It's better if I show you guys. <laughs> all right, so our banners are all physical items, but everything else, our welcome signs, our, what else? tags, signs, everything else, those are digital items. Gosh, what is my main advice for digital items? I have a few. Number one is to, first of all, my biggest advice is to, is to make it very clear to the shopper that what they're selling is a digital item. For example, we have the words download, um, 
printable, edible instant, or it's actually instant download. So on your title, make sure that you have those words, digital download, printable, whatever it is, and also through your photos. As you can see over here, we talk, we use Jet for our digital downloads and throughout your photos, you can see that we make very clear that what this is, is a digital item and also through our description. If I could give um, a little trick, it would be this. Please type yes to confirm your understanding. <laughs> I've given this tip to a client of mine before where she was having a lot of issues where she said, Julia, I'm making so clear through my photos, through my titles that what this is is a digital item, but people are still complaining that they felt that what they were buying was a physical item and not a digital item. And this is my trick. Over here, it says, please type yes to confirm your understanding. And your understanding is basically saying that this is a DIY digital product. People cannot buy this until they physically type yes. And if they're typing yes, it's because they read this. So that's my tip for you. You have this little box and this is a personalization box. So when you list a product on Etsy, you can customize it. And over here, they will be able to do the customization that they want, but instead we did this. So that's what you can do in order to make sure that people understand that this is a digital item that they are purchasing it. What is my YouTube channel? Someone asked. I'll go back to that PowerPoint so you guys can see it. Right here. Just type my name, Julia Rosie, and you will be able to find my YouTube channel. I don't use Instagram. Can I get a copy of this PowerPoint? If you don't have Instagram, you can email me. It's emailsconnection at gmail. That way I can send you the link. Is there a minimum number of products that you recommend having in your shop before doing ads? Mm, there is no magic number, but what I want you guys to think is what might happen a lot of times is that people might find you through an ad, but then they don't necessarily love the product that they are seeing. And what they will do is click on your Etsy shop and scroll through your Etsy shop to see what else they can find. And the more options that you give them, the most likely they are to buy something from you. For example, our Etsy shop has over a thousand different things that shoppers can purchase from. Um, so, I mean, there, there's no magic number. I have read Etsy forums. I have talked to my Instagram followers, my students in the past. And what seems to be the norm is people say that they start seeing const constant growth and daily sales once they reach 150 listings on Etsy, once they have 150 products listed on Etsy. Again, it doesn't mean that once you reach 150 listings, you will have success. Your Etsy shop will start to grow. You can start to grow your Etsy shop with five listings, or you know, it might take you 500 listings to see a growth. But the more listings that you have, the more options you are giving your shoppers. And again, the most likely they are to purchase from you. Mm hmm. Should you send a thank you note to your five star review? What you can do is, I'm sorry, I hope this back and forth is not annoying to you guys. Um, what you can do, or unless they literally just changed it. Let me see something on my Etsy shop. Mm. Oh, here it is. Okay. 
when someone leaves you a five star review, what you can do is post a public response and just, you know, thank them for their five star review. Tell them that it means a lot to you. It means a lot to your business. So that's what you can do if you would like to respond to the five star review. All right, uh, I saw a question. Where is it? I can't find it. Okay. Can you put all your listings on hold and redo? If you first put each thing in by itself, can you make them into one listing? So, I mean, the first question, can you put all your listings on hold and redo? What you can do is deactivate them. So like I was talking about when you go on your listing, if you want to list something, but then you want to take it out, what you can do is deactivate it and then you can work on it by like you, you can work on it if you want and then it will not be live on your website. And then if you first put each thing in by itself, can you make them into one listing? um if i understand your question the answer is no so i think what you're asking is can you combine listings so if i do this banner and then this banner and then group them together you cannot do that what you have to do is put different variations into one listing so let me try to find an example this bright to be you can choose the ribbon color for an example and so that's what you would have to do. If you wanna have two variations together, let's see if you, yeah, so you said pendants that are the same, but different colors. You could list them separately if you would want to, but what you can do is just do this, have the color option, and then people can choose the color that they want in one listing. All right, guys, I know that some of you still had questions, uh, but I actually have to finish this workshop because I have to finish my banners and ship them out today. Um, so let's do this. If you guys still have questions, DM me on Instagram, again, at Females Connection. I try to answer to as many DMs as I can, and I'll answer you guys over there if you still have questions. But 